When it comes to masculine medicine, I have three principles. Each of these three has both a theory and a practice side. I want to review all three of these in one segment. So to begin, I'll ask this question. What are the three principles of masculine medicine? The theory side to the first principle is this, be willing to take an L. This isn't a tool for optimism in the face of adversity. Rather, to be availed the possibility of winning, you must also open yourself up to the possibility of losing. Part of what it takes to rise to the occasion of masculinity is the acceptance and surrender to the inevitable burden of performance. Like with any performance of any worth, there exists the possibility of failure. Said differently, if you want to be able to win, you have to be able to lose. Part of being a man is going to be constant rejection. Women and children are most times provided an illusionary world to live in. As men, we have no such world and must face existence on a one-to-one -one basis. This isn't a complaint. Things like this are not a bug in the system, but rather a feature of it. The practice side to the first principle is this. Play to win. The losses will come regardless. A true victory must be taken. That's why a game has rules. Each side agrees to them. Each side comes and competes their hardest. And then who gets the victory is the one that takes it. Your victory would mean nothing if it was given to you. You can't play a game and win if all you focus on is not losing. The only place this is effective is in a game where you can get a default win. Participation trophies. In that scenario, you do not take the win you want, which is actually winning. Instead, you leave yourself to the hope that a suitable win will eventually be given to you. You will not find the state of victory in avoiding losses. The first letter in the word lesson is L. So if you're getting a lesson, you're gonna have to take an L. The theory side of the second principle is this. We are not equal. Two things that are similar are not the same. Men and women share many similarities in certain respects. That almost goes without saying. What doesn't go without saying is the fact that where we differ, we differ very much and in very specific ways. Men and women are not the same. I know this argument has been allowed to be subsidized by corporate and state interests and that the order of the day is to feel over what's real. I get it. Everyone is entitled to their own opinions, but what you are not personally entitled to is your own facts. That is called delusion. Yes, there are similarities between men and women, but when we take a myopic view on the similarities to the extreme, we miss the defining factors that make each side unique in its own right. For males, this kind of faulty premises, more often than not, leads us to expect women to think and be held to the equal standards of men, which will cause us to expect from women things that they cannot and will not give or be for us. Our own expectations frame the responses that we give to the world. Expecting males and females to be the same will eventually lead you to ruin. The practice side of the second principle is this. It's never her fault. Women are the children of the adult world. Now, that is not to say that women are children, because if I wanted to say that women are children, I would do like I just did twice and say that women are children. What I said and am saying is that women are the children of the adult world. In order to be the leader of your life, let alone a family or even a relationship, you will need to rise above needing the other to be at fault. This is not to suggest that no one else possesses agency nor has the capacity to be culpable. Rather, that to effectively lead, you have to be able and willing to rise above the team 
to fill the shoes of a captain. If you are the leader, your followers' mistakes are your mistakes. If you are the boss, your employees' mistakes are a reflection of your lack of direction and guidance. Not to say you are infallible, but that if you are to take up the authority to lead, then along with that comes the responsibility for the outcomes. Now, on to the third and final principle. The theory side of which is this, that this is your life. Not only are you the only one who has to live the life that you set out for yourself, but in the game of relationships, your life as a male is what you're bartering. When it comes to relationships, what women barter is an opportunity to have a place in and or with her body, even if that place is potentially quite temporary. As a male, what you barter is the potential for a permanent place in your life, if not your life itself in her service. Many males have already fucked around and found out. Living imprisoned in emotionless and sexless marriages, or having their marriages destroyed and their assets seized. Even men who don't take the route of marriage will quite often find the fruits of their life's work with the help of the state, seized from them and funneled to a woman in a very permanent and consistent manner. This is not to say that the same never happens to women. This is to say, however, that the trend is weighed heavily in one direction. The practice side to the third principle is this. Be righteously honest. In order to effectively do the right thing, that right thing is that which is right for you, you're going to need to be righteously honest. To be righteous is to be without guilt and in line with what is right. Being righteous becomes a much simpler task when your foundations are set upon honesty. A lie has to be cultivated in and of itself before it can be effective at being a foundation. Even still, a lie can at any time be defeated, more especially by the correct form of truth. All that being said, a lie is shoddy foundation for your capacity to be righteous, and you need to be able to be righteous. The unrelenting critique of your performance as a male will require you to be your own center of steadfast stability, not to mention your own center of force and effect to propel yourself forward. The center you will need to hold and maintain your frame. You want to build that on a foundation of honesty. That way, your righteousness will be consistently sound. As you may have noticed, each of the three principles does not possess its own individual phrasing. Rather, each has a theory and a practice side. Now, the interconnected nature of these two separate sides is most certainly not to be overlooked. Too much theory will starve you for practice. And practice without a refined theory is basically proactive blind faith. Without a clear understanding of your own theory, your practices will be hollow and amount to nothing more than simply copying someone else. My aim is not necessarily to provide you rules for life, but more so an option on how you can think about the scenario that contemporary men now find themselves in. In conclusion, and to wrap this up, I'll say this to remind you of why this is medicine and what difference that makes. When taking medicine, you're taking it to heal yourself and not so that you can take it while someone else takes theirs. That being said, the places where women do the same thing or don't do enough is of no concern to you and healing your own ailments, more especially whichever ailments in question. Masculine medicine is for men to heal themselves and not to become even or equal with women.